Hello, welcome back to this new lesson of our virology course. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about another important family, which is called Picornaviridae. Picornaviridae family is a family made of RNA viruses, so they have a single strand RNA uh, with a positive polarity. Uh, they are re these viruses are really small. They are about 25 to 30 nanometers. Uh, they are uncoated, but they are really, really strong. They can resist at really extreme temperatures and extreme pH, uh, like 3 pH or 9 pH. There are four types of viruses belonging to this family. The first one is called enterovirus, uh, which is made of about 112 serotypes. Then we have rhinovirus uh, with 110 serotypes. Then we have hepatovirus, uh, where we find uh, hepatitis A virus. And finally, there is aftovirus type. So let's talk about rhinovirus first. These viruses cause the cold, the famous cold, but there, are, there is a large number of other kinds of viruses that are able to cause the same disease. But consider that 50% of colds are caused by uh, rhinoviruses. Cold is an acute respiratory disease it is limit. It is uh, localized and self-limiting, so it's not so dangerous. It's also characterized by low fever, by sneezing, nasal congestion, and a gradual onset. The complications are really rare, and they are just represented by a bacterial uh, overinfection. So uh, the virus causes. Um, uh, an irreversible damage to the cells belonging to the respi respiratory mucosa. The virus is not able to get through the respiratory mucosa, so it's not able to enter the bloodstream. That's why the infection remains localized. Um, how to treat this disease? Well, you can just use palli palliatives, so like anti-inflammatories, like antihistamine uh, and other other drugs, but essentially you have to let your body, your, your organism, uh, fight against the virus. So the incubation is about one or two days, and the healing is also uh, occurs in about some days, even if you don't take, don't get any kind of drug. So let's talk about enterovirus. The enteroviruses are transmitted in a, a, fe a fecal oral way, so essentially by eating uh, infected food. The virus is uh, freed through the mouth and also through stool. So the virus is, is able to enter the intestinal mucosa and reach the bloodstream, the lymphatic blood, the lymphatic stream and the bloodstream as well. So it's potentially able to reach any tissue, reach any organ. That's why the symptoms are really various and uh, it's difficult to make the right diagnosis for this reason. The symptoms are, for example, hemorrhagic, pink eye, or cutaneous uh, exanthema, or for example meningitis, pericarditis, uh, myocarditis, or uh, diarrhea, hepatitis, and many other symptoms. As I told you, there is a really large number of viruses belonging to enterovirus, the family, enterovirus type. The first one is Coxsackie virus. It was found uh, not so many years ago in USA. Coxsackie viruses are um, gathered in two groups, group A and group B. They 
have some differences but basically they cause the same symptoms. Another enterovirus is echovirus which means enteric orphan virus. That means that this virus often doesn't cause any disease, any important disease. The, the last one is the poliovirus. It causes the poliomyelitis or infantile paralysis. The virus uh, replicates inside motor neurons, so it making them die essentially. The human being is the only reservoir. The incubation is about one week, but it, depend, it depends on how many viruses the patient gets. There are two vaccines. The Salk vaccine, which is intramuscular, and it's made of a killed virus, while the Sabin vaccine is made intradermical in an intradermical way and the virus is just attenuated. There are some countries where there is no vaccine so the infection is an endemic infection. These countries are India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and a few others. The infection is acute in 1% in of the cases and these patients always die because of uh, respiratory muscle paralysis. In fact, in the past, the patients used to live inside artificial lungs. Um, they couldn't get out of these enormous machineries uh, because they couldn't breathe without these machineries. But their life was really terrible. 5% the of the infections are subclinical, so the patient just have mild symptoms, like flu-like symptoms, really general symptoms, and uh, they recover really soon, in a few days, uh, and in a natural way, without any kind of therapy. The patients with the acute disease tend to develop uh, the post-polio syndrome, because of the muscular atrophy essentially. So this can be a really dangerous disease and this is a, a terrible disease in the countries where it's endemic but fortunately Western countries don't have this problem because we have the vaccine and uh, we have all the cures we want essentially. So this is all for now and I'll see you soon. Bye!